I carried a sheaf of papers almost as thick as my hand to the third floor of my dorm on New Campus, just across the canal from the academic buildings. My room was small and sparse, just a metal desk with a matching chair and a small electric fan to blow away a little of the Pakistani heat. It suited me. My clothes were tucked neatly into a closet and my bed was a cotton mattress on the floor. There had been an iron bed frame, but it was too short for me. So out it went. Sleeping on the floor was better for my back anyway. I slipped off my shoes and dropped the pile on the desk. It landed with a flat, dull thump. There was no textbook for my course in comparative constitutions of the world. Just this pile of unbound papers curated by the professor and kept behind the counter at a cramped bookshop in the old Anarkali Bazaar. It was the oldest marketplace in Lahore. A kaleidoscope of fruit stands and food carts and stalls that sold cloth and spices and produce and a thousand other goods. Almost anything anyone might want to buy. The air was perfumed with cardamom and the smoky sweet tang of grilled meat that gradually curdled into a stink of horse dung and diesel and human sweat. And the alleys were crowded with rickshaws and taxis overflowing with passengers and packages. Horses pulled buggies and left droppings on the paths. Skinny men hauled large carts with unreasonably heavy loads. In the jittering splendor of an Arkali, I always noticed them, saw what poverty would force a meek man to do to earn a few rupees. It would take me 40 minutes by bus to get to the shop, then another 40 back through the unrelenting traffic of Lahore. When I got to my room, a shaft of late afternoon sun slanted through the window. Printed across the top page was Constitution of the United States. Below that, deeper in the stack, were the constitutions of the Soviet Union, a fat ream of interminable articles and clauses, and of West Germany, slimmer. I would discover, but just as dull, as well as the Magna Carta, I hadn't bothered skimming any of them as I rode the bus back through the potholed and rutted streets. It seemed too much trouble to be juggling pages of legalese while bouncing beside sweaty commuters. But now, standing alone at my desk with the kind of half-bored curiosity one tends to feel in a burgeoning dusk, I turned the page. The Constitution was not on the next one. Instead, the title on the second page was Declaration of Independence. Those were curious words. The way they were arranged into an aggressive noun, I rolled them around in my head. To declare your independence, I declare my independence. My spine tingled, straightened, a quick, involuntary spasm. I'd grasp in that moment a remarkable insight, a great and improbable truth I'd never conceived to be possible. 